Hello and welcome to the Shamanic Heart Space podcast. My name is Nancy and I'm going to be beginning this new season of the podcast with a bonus episode all about Mercury Retrograde. If it's your first time here, welcome. I want to let you know that I'm not an astrologer, but I am going to be channeling uh, the collective energy for this first Mercury Retrograde in 2023. So that means I'll be receiving the information, the download on what we can expect collectively. Uh, So all of it, some of it, none of it may apply to you. So please just take what resonates and leave what doesn't, as always. Also, it's quite a busy, full-on Merco retrograde, this one. And so you might change a lot between now and February when Mercury's cleared his shadow So do feel free to listen again throughout this time from around December the 28th up to, yeah, kind of mid-February really, Uh, because what resonates with you will change as the energy does and you do. So there's a lot to share. Are you ready? You are ready. So let's go. All right, so let's just take a moment to breathe. And connect, connect with ourselves, first of all, connecting with our environment, and connecting in with any higher power that's always present. All right, so I just want to remind you, see what personal messages might pop up through you and for you. You can tone your own intuitive muscles. Okay, starting to feel the energy now. It makes me yawn, weirdly, so sorry if that makes you yawn too. All right, so we're starting 2023 in Mercury Retrograde. So, as I said already, this is going to be starting around 28th of December 2022, lasting until January the 18th, 2023, with a shadow either side, so probably still feeling it until around February the 8th. This retrograde is going to be bringing a lot of positive energy and support, but we have to lean into our shadow to really get the most out of it. Seems to be a common theme these days. Okay. So this really brings an opportunity to slow down, be reflective, Make sure that things are complete, especially within yourself. This is really what Mercury Retrograde is all about. (laughs) They tend to get around three a year. It's very interesting to be starting the year in one. All right, so the other side of it, Mercury Retrograde can manifest as delays, communication malfunctions, electronic failures, So just go with the flow and slow down. As always, take the opportunities and leave the chaos. Okay. So we need to keep trusting that everything's happening for our highest good. This has been a common theme for a long time. Hang on in there. And I'm just the messenger, but I'm here to tell you that you are doing great. Okay, it's no surprise really that these are themes that came up in the episode about the new moon in Capricorn in the last episode. If you haven't listened to that, please go back and check it out. So, we need to look at what or who is holding us back. This retrograde is providing us the space and time and energy to be able to do that. Things that are holding us back as well as potentially getting in our way. But the answers are always inside. What we're seeing in the world around us and our environment is a reflection of what is going on inside. So we need to spend some time, or yeah, the support is there for you to spend some time really going within into your own heart space portal. So they're showing me the word attachment. 
So if we are attached to any ideas or outcomes, situations or things, physical things, that can end up leading to a disappointment. We need to really be as open as possible. Is there anything else that still needs to be left behind? So, um, yeah, this, all of this can look like things that affect your mood, uh, things, external things that can affect your choices, where your energy is going. Outcomes changing. So you looking outside anywhere for anything. We really have to go into ourselves. All of these things are more, yeah, everything that is potentially affected by external forces, we need to look at because uh, we're kind of damaging ourselves by doing that. Okay, so this could look and uh, like and mean that not fully in your sovereignty, not fully in your power, in some quite deep places, in the shadow, we call it the shadow, so this is a great time for shadow work, essentially. <laughs> okay, yeah, of course. Okay, so they're just giving me a message. All right, so we can't always see our shadow, <laughs> that's why it's the shadow. The things may be going on for you during this retrograde where you can identify these hidden parts by looking at the people around you, the situations around you, all of that it's mirror work, classic mirror work. I put something on Instagram recently about this actually, um, where it's like Betty finally realized that she was also the arsehole down the road because everything that we are seeing uh, is a reflection of what is going on inside of us. They're telling me that I didn't make that clear enough before. <laughs> so I apologize if I didn't make that clear enough before. Um, we see our hidden parts, we identify our shadow uh, often through looking externally. And then that is the pathway into ourselves. This resonates with me, actually. <sighs> mm. Okay, so see what you're seeing in them and see where that is showing up in you your internal world being reflected all around you so if someone is being a moaning, moaning myrtle or a victim around you <laughs> especially if it is really triggering you uh, and driving you mad are you being a victim are you being angry what is that that needs to even out in you find balance in yourself because then you won't be reactive to it if someone hasn't been letting you speak up or out, how, how and why are you doing that to yourself? So all of these things going on externally really are about what you're doing to yourself as above, so below, as within, so without. So we can really use this retrograde energy to sharpen our senses, to look into that mirror and identify where is this, where is the disharmony Okay, so they're saying you can expect to go back to areas of, of your life, to go back to areas of your life that you may have addressed already and have a reshuffle. The energy is quite different in 2023, looking ahead. So we can expect um, we can expect to feel a bit topsy-turvy. <laughs> uh, it's going to be really important to get clear inside of yourself so that you will be just fine within yourself. Expecting outcomes, but then having them turn out in a different way is a lesson as well, where you need balance within. Okay, so collectively speaking, I guess a lot of people's plans are going to change. A lot of people's minds are going to change. Uh, maybe where people thought they had some solid ground, sometimes those things can change. So... Be flexible with that as much as you can. All right, so saying about being aware of giving your energy, your power, your sovereignty away, especially in ways you can't see. So I'm saying telepathically, well, if you can't see it, how can you be aware of it? <laughs> but we all do it. We all do it. It's part of the course <laughs> here in Earth School. All right, be aware of wanting happiness by looking outside, 
believing that happiness is outside or is in another person. Yeah, that's that's expecting somebody to rescue you, essentially. Mm. Or, yeah, similarly, feeling you'll be set free, but it's coming out on their terms. So where are you not setting yourself free? Where are you not supporting yourself? Where are you not rescuing yourself or abandoning yourself? So take your power back. So this can come from relationships and all kinds. It can come from work. It can come from lovers. It can come from family, friends, everywhere. Just the person on the street uh, around you. So now identify what is hidden in your shadow, in your mirror, and take your power back. If there's any sense of I'll be happy when I have X or the relationship or the job, when it's time to ask yourself what it is that you think that thing is going to offer you. Is it security? Is it love? Is it stability? No, <laughs> because that desire for the external thing is showing you that you need to give it to yourself. And uh, they're saying a lot of um, a lot of people are kidding themselves. They're believing that they are doing doing the work. Uh, on themselves or that they're providing everything for themselves but there's still expectations there's still attachment coming with that so we really have to be self-aware right now okay so I'm telling them we probably need some things to survive and yes it is good to have goals uh, but that's uh, yeah okay so that's not what they're saying they're saying that we need to look deeper at what we are craving because it's probably well, it is a signpost. They're saying it's a signpost to what we're not giving ourselves. For example, so you might say, oh, I'm crazy in love with this person. Well, do you need to direct that love to yourself? Because if that person dies or leaves, where does that leave you? It's just a question. Please don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, a lot of people contacting me about Twin Flame stuff at the moment. They're talking about the Twin Flame to me now. So a lot of this, I need to be with my Twin Flame because they complete me. Well, maybe you don't need to be with them. Maybe they're just mirroring your disowned parts. You know, maybe they're just mirroring your shadow and things you need to look at. Um, So being open to to change, to different outcomes, to things you haven't even thought of yet. Wow, this is a really busy Mercury retrograde, huh? Um, look, I don't know. Your journey is your own journey. So these these feel like quite extreme, potentially triggering examples that they're giving me here. But but sometimes I guess this is what it takes for some people to wake up in a more in a in a deeper way. Maybe there's uh, quite a serious tone to the messages that are coming through. <laughs> the human part of Nancy isn't completely comfortable saying these things, but um. I guess that's what we're talking about. I have to walk the talk and be authentic too. I can't tell you to be authentic to, to yourself and then not be so. I can't pick and choose what messages I bring through and what I don't because of fear of pissing people off, right? <sighs> okay, and this is what's being asked of all of us, to be vulnerable, to be raw, to be more real than you've ever been. The support is there to uh, to help you and to launch us into yes 2023 but a yeah a 12 year cycle a 12 year chapter okay that's why it's fierce because they don't want us to take any baggage with us that we don't need going into this 12 year cycle wowzers okay so it feels important to let you know this isn't a warrior fighting kind of energy it's quite subtle it's actually very divine feminine energy coming with this it's very loving towards yourself. Uh, yeah, breaking some immature or toxic feminine traits in a lot of people. So that you can see what you need to see. You can support yourself in this going forward. Okay, so they're showing me uh, like a bathroom mirror. <laughs> that's uh, misted up and uh, demisting the mirror so you let the scales fall from your eyes from your heart don't lie to yourself anymore on anything get your head out of the sand out of any lies any illusions but with love 
was a real beautiful um yeah paternal energy here too so I guess that's Capricorn uh, so yeah, this is this, 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 uh, this is a time for reparenting. We've got uh, divine masculine, divine feminine support behind us, and that feels very much like the love of the parents that maybe some people didn't receive. It's the time to give that to yourself. Where do you need to heal the mother wound, the father wound, to evolve into the mature divine masculine, the mature divine feminine? How are they doing within you? Do you feel harmonized in that? Is there more work that needs to be done? <laughs> They're saying, yes, there's definitely more work to be done. <laughs> um, okay, so how are you supporting that part of yourself? Yeah, are the masculine and feminine in balance within you? Really important work. You can use some of those as uh, journaling questions or maybe further research for yourself. <laughs> Okay, I want to say this isn't about gender, just in case you don't know. Uh, this is about energy. When we talk about divine masculine, divine feminine, it's nothing to do with gender. And uh, we have all, all of those energies within us. Uh, but sometimes, yeah, they can be out of harmony, out of balance. So the natural laws of the universe. And are you flowing with them or against them? And how do you know? <laughs> Good question. All right, so start by paying attention to your life. What triggers you? What is showing up for you? Is Does it feel aligned? Does it feel harmonious? What patterns are repeating? What wounds open up for you? Do you always end up here? These are the kinds of questions we need to be asking ourselves. Yeah, so when when you identify these things within yourself, you can kind of follow the thread. If everything is on a spectrum and everything is connected, follow the thread. They're showing me a thread. That's where this example is coming from. So an example they're giving me, if you feel like you're on the outside or abandoned, you follow that to the other end of the energy where are you abandoning yourself where are you keeping yourself as an outsider if you feel angry or judging others or feeling um that others feel those ways towards you where are you doing that to yourself and there's quite an art to this level of awareness it's quite hard for the the human me to uh, explain this on a podcast <laughs> i'm just asking them for some help in this so yeah it's kind of like uh, the idea of uh a spectrum and everything is included in that spectrum so um, maybe this example is the light and the dark the masculine and the feminine they are two parts of the same thing because everything is connected so if there is uh, a dysfunction a disharmony on one end you're looking at how you're going to get to the other end because there's an absence of the love or the light or whatever it is that you are seeking in yourself so with something like judgment the other end of that spectrum would be acceptance you know so people that you love or family or people in authority can be very good mirrors teachers in this regard so uh try to control any reactions to them that might be triggering uh because they're just trying to teach you this is how you take your power back so instead of getting upset or angry with these people uh you can say okay i'm looking for the love in this situation or i'm looking for the self upset acceptance in this situation all right they're saying also to do the thing that <laughs> do the thing that scares you it's time to do the thing that scares you hey <sighs> all right you're just showing me something just bear with me a second okay so if you always end up in control in the masculine role and you feel that's exhausting for you, follow the thread to the polar opposite on the spectrum, which could be uh, where and maybe why you're not allowing yourself to be vulnerable and then look for the safe ways to be vulnerable. But if you're not used to vulnerability, this could be the scariest thing in your life. <laughs> um you know, or changing job, for example, maybe that's the scariest thing in your life, but it's just what you need. 
if something scares you, you say the obstacle is the way. It's scaring you to show you something. Okay, so this could be uh, <laughs> a big project. <laughs> You've got this though, okay? I believe in you. You are here for a reason. You're a lot stronger than you think you are. <laughs> wow, what a start to the year. <sighs> okay, so reminders of self-awareness, self-love, self-acceptance. This is really necessary. We need to de-armor and fall back into love. And maybe some things have happened recently that have made your heart feel closed or maybe you feel disillusioned, disheartened. But we need to put down our weapons. This is really necessary. Yeah, that might sound really scary. Mm. But do you want to live in a world where you have to protect yourself all of the time? This is the question that they've given me now. Or do you want to live in a loving and peaceful world? Well, guess what? It starts within. If we are constantly protecting ourselves, we're going to keep attracting things we need to protect ourselves from. So we have to take that armor off. We have to go into the depths of our hearts. We have to go into the things that, yeah, scare us. So there's energy available here for re-evaluation of your circumstances, of who you are, where you're headed. There is clarity coming around what matters around your boundaries. Boundaries have come up so much throughout the last series of this podcast. I guess our boundaries are really tested, especially in the Western world. So draw your energy back to you. If you don't know how to do it, I'm sure there's information available online or, you know, ask your, your spirit guides and whatever you use, your angels to help you with that. Or, you know, you're welcome to join us for a ceremony. They say this is more about saying no than saying yes. And again, give yourself what you need and then that will be reflected in the outer world. And yeah, so from a, a feminine, open heart place, not from a protective, masculine place. Okay, so getting that retrograde, looking back, allow yourself to backtrack. Allow yourself to cut back to save your energy. Allow yourself to change your mind. All these things are okay. All right, so also don't take things personally. What is happening <laughs> anyway is not personal. It's about the person. <laughs> like, okay, so this, this is when they're talking about how human people interact with each other. And sometimes they project, sometimes they attack, sometimes they withdraw. And that can make you feel triggered too, but you don't need to take it personally. So you can use this time to look at what is ready to change. And what is really healthy for you? What is healthy for you? Yeah, if you're overwhelmed or tired or overburdened, lean into Capricorn, that paternal, loving, grounded energy. Lean in, it's there for you. will help you to honor yourself. Yeah, really wants to take your weight and support you energetically emotionally it's really beautiful actually and then you have the space you have the container to focus on yourself focus on your dreams fantastic okay okay change in uh, energy here all right so they're saying about looking back over the Gregorian calendar year of 2022, uh, maybe, <laughs> and see what really lit you up. What gave you energy, what paid off, what didn't. Essentially, this is <laughs> what was good for you, and do more of that. All right, so this might take some discipline, some boundary setting. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, the realm of Capricorn. Discipline, be disciplined with yourself, uh, but doing stuff with love. If you are going to be going to the gym or going on some kind of diet or something, do it with love or with resentment and not out of um, necessity of feeling like, oh, I have to do this because it won't work. <laughs> All right. So if you're still feeling unclear at the time of listening to this, you have time to step back. Detach a little and stay open. You spend time meditating, reflecting. Sit and listen to yourself. To any messages that want to come through for you. Self-assessment. And really, what is best for you? Just don't come from a place of fear. You can ask yourself, what am I going to commit to? for myself, for my highest good, and then keep coming from that place. You commit to something because it's for your highest good. And then you always have that to come back to, like an intention in a, in a plant ceremony. It's not necessarily about the intention, but you always know where to come back to if you get lost. <sighs> okay, so this could mean restructuring anything from very small to very big things in your life. So, um, you know, you can be kind to yourself in that. All right, so now they're showing me um, like a, a huge task, like climbing a mountain, but you do it step by step, but with commitment. So um, we say in Peru, poco a poco, little by little. Uh, probably in England, it's like baby steps. But if you, yeah, if you come from love and commitment this time, next month, or this next, or this time next year, things could be really different for you. You know, the rainforest, she didn't pop up overnight, you know. <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day. So, yeah, this could get really deep. <laughs> and I guess that's kind of the intention with the energy to really excavate. <laughs> Okay, so they want me to remind you that you are the architect, you are the creator. <laughs> Ayahuasca once showed me this. <laughs> it's all inside. So uh, it's important to connect with yourself and strengthen that relationship before any others. <laughs> okay. Yeah, once you strengthen your relationship with yourself, fully accept yourself and all of those things that you think you don't like, just sit back and watch how your other relationships strengthen too. This word again, commitment. Commit to yourself and watch commitments come to you. These aren't reasons to do it. That's looking for an outcome. The reason to do these things and commit to yourself and to do these deep dives, the reason is you. Do it because you love yourself. Yeah, and we're still deconditioning, <laughs> we're still coming home, we're still getting lighter individually and of course collectively because it's all connected and change is happening, manifesting is happening on the wings of a hummingbird, harness all of this magic but it's all coming from you, it's all coming from you but things are going on behind the scenes. You can trust it. All right, so back to the kind of undercurrent of the retrograde. This retrograde could show you where things didn't show up or work out for you, but you're being asked to reframe this to say, okay, well, good. A bit like, yeah, well, reframing. God saves the hardest lessons for the ones they love the most, you know? So this means that you are being given opportunities to expand and grow massively. So don't fight it. There is so much beauty and expansion to be had in this pain. The cracking open of the heart. The seed breaking, pushing up through the earth, you know, growing pains. We don't need to fight it and to feel it. 
you'd only be fighting yourself anyway, <laughs> prolonging the lesson, or it will come back around twice as bad. <laughs> it's uh, pretty much like uh, the pain is the path to freedom. Pain is beautiful in itself and leads to beautiful places. Okay, so we're working through lower chakra stuff, which tends to be, yeah, fear, pain, grief. It's not all love and light, you know, <laughs> and joy. <laughs> um, yeah, this is really where the work is now. So um, come on, people, please fall into that, sink into the lower chakras. Many of us are able to use our gifts now and connect with the other realms, so on and so forth. But now we have to embody it here. It's important to remember as well that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. So come back to earth and embody everything that you have learned, everything you know about or everything you perceive about potentially other realms or gifts or the things that have um uh, well been lost but making a comeback <laughs> into the human experience so essentially we are the bridge uh, between the manifested and the unmanifested so be the bridge that's the, the bridge between worlds you're capable of wow so much more than we can imagine, you know, you're capable of so much more, uh, okay, so, it's important not to pin happiness on the motives and actions and others, we're coming back to this, this is a really long channel actually, <laughs> uh, they're taking their time with this and coming back to points, so it must be important, must be important, you're not dependent it's important that you're, you're, you're not dependent, your happiness in your direction is not dependent on an idea of or whim of anyone or anything external. Wake up. Take more responsibility for yourself and your life. Stop lying to yourself. If everything is happening for your highest good, thank goodness it didn't work out the way you wanted or expected. And as we enter into this 12-year cycle, do you want anything that's not going to be good for you, not going to match you coming with you for 12 years? I don't. <laughs> I guess they don't either. <laughs> they don't want to be revisiting this old ground. Okay, so be aware that your energetic match matches will show up as they have been all along, looping back around to where we began now. If you keep ending up feeling lonely, well, why are you still believing that you're separate? Change the story. Some of what is coming through, yeah, might feel triggering. Uh, you might say it's not my fault that X keeps happening or they keep doing this to me or X isn't letting me do Y. This is, this is a story. This is victim stuff. Your power, you're giving your power away. Good if you feel triggered. This is your wake-up call. This is your opportunity to realign and be sovereign again. <laughs> They're saying to me, it's going to be a lot of projections onto me for this. Well, okay. This is universal law, universal truth. You attract what you need to look at. <laughs> okay, so I'm reluctant to use the word heal because it implies that you are broken. But guess what? You're not broken. Um, I don't know what other word to use. Uh, we're just bringing ourselves back together, re-remembering who we are. Okay, back to energies and attraction. So energies that are a match will attract to each other and that's it. So be a boss, master yourself, learn from what happened before, be, be boundaried, stop, yeah, stop whinging, stop feeling sorry for yourself. <laughs> Oof. Okay, please don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> okay, who are you? What do you need? How can you give it to yourself? Be bold. Be bold, okay? Fuck it. What is there to lose now? 
apart from behaviors and attitudes and attachments and stories that just no longer serve you. Get messy, get vulnerable. You're a long time dead. And maybe you've been keeping a lot of plates spinning or a balancing act going on or whatever, but control is an illusion. Protection is an illusion. Connection is real. Connection is real. Energy is real. Marry yourself. Love yourself. Give yourself everything you need. Watch it manifest in the external world. Okay. So, this is likely a new way of being. Commit to what matters to you. If people fall away, good. They're not a match to you. And there's space for greater alignment. All right. So for some people, this could feel slow and annoying. People changing their minds. Changes. A lot of people don't like changes. Changes in direction. Blah. Again, go with the flow. You have power over how you react. And that's it. And that's it. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> you can surrender now. <laughs> that's the only thing you need to consider is having that distance between you and your reaction, you and your thoughts. Whew. Breathe, surrender. Stuff is moving. Hold your own energy. Hold your own space. All right. So in a Mercury retrograde, mm, yeah, don't, you, if you can help it, don't make any big decisions because things will be looking different by the end. The more things will be coming into light. <laughs> by, yeah, definitely by February. Okay, I'm just seeing what's going on. Ah, yeah, okay, that's why they're sh <laughs> Observe, observe as much as you can. Make your decisions when you have the whole picture. How you feel now might not be how you feel in five weeks or by February 2023. So you might want to listen to this again, <laughs> see the new resonances. All right, so we're going to likely be on more solid ground by the end of January 2023. Oh, with movement after that. <laughs> so, drop the baggage so you can move more freely when that movement comes. So this is not a time for a lot of uh, action externally, maybe taking action inside, going on a vision quest inside yourself. Be mature, not reactive, very Capricorn. Uh, as we said, I'm taking this personally. If something comes along that feels disheartening, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if things come along that hurt. But also just breathe and let go with grace and ease as much as possible. You do what you got to do to get through it and make space then for something new and wonderful to come your way. Please remember that everything is okay. Life has a funny way of working things out, right? Probably now you can think of a time when it all seemed like everything was falling apart, but it was actually coming together. So they're saying again, wake up, wake up, take your time. <laughs> this is like me in the morning. <laughs> I wake up in the morning. I need a long time to kind of come back to earth. And this is what they're saying, wake up and take your time, hand over the heavy stuff, you don't have to carry that around with you, if you're feeling frustrated during this retrograde, it's okay, everything passes, if you're feeling frustrated, it's something for you to look at, take it easy, you don't need to know it all, in fact you can't, <laughs> you can't know it all, so just, just relax, <laughs> just relax. Oh, okay, so what's important to you? And you can start considering what you might want to manifest next after the retrograde. Oh, interesting. They're saying, what do you want to take to your grave? I'm just getting some more clarity on that. Okay, and what they mean by that is uh, make sure it's your dream, your dream, and not a conditioned idea or response to something your real core values 
and live and love from there. So I guess, yeah, we're, we're in the realms of bigger picture stuff. Not some plastic uh, throwaway idea that we have been conditioned into. That means what it needs to mean for you. So please, over this Mercury retrograde, just take some time out for yourself. Go on a vision quest within. Really feel the things that you don't want to feel. Look at the things you don't want to look at. That way, love lies, peace lies, harmony lies. I really hope that you found this helpful. Uh, Yeah, if you did, please share with someone. And be sure to hit the notification thing so you don't miss any episodes. I don't have regular days where the episodes come out. The channels just come on the channel. Uh, Maybe you want to consider joining us on Patreon. Uh, You can just check out the show notes for all of that. Um, It could be a good time to make that commitment to yourself, to make time for yourself uh, and your growth this year uh, with moon ceremonies and other things that go on over there. So massive thank you to you for listening. Thank you to my amazing Patreon family, all courageous souls working away on waking up and integrating everything that they're learning here at Earth School. Real dedicated bunch. Also, yeah, if you want to come and work with ayahuasca, master plants in the jungle in Peru, um, or with me personally, uh, all that info is in the in the show notes. I will be heading back to Peru in February 2023. And, yeah, just thank you for everything in 2022. The love, the follows, the likes, the comments, the community, all the five-star reviews, everything. 2022 was, wow, incredibly transformative for me. In many ways, maybe my most difficult year yet. Um, But it's been worth it. It's been worth it. The alchemist has definitely been, within me, has definitely been working away. I'm sure a lot of you can identify with that. I absolutely couldn't do what I do, or probably even be who I am, without you listening and taking part. And so I'm so grateful that you are here. So I hope to offer more support to you and many other people, all on the soul growth journey throughout 2023. And forever. (laughs) 2023 is going to be big. (laughs) Look look how it's starting. Anyway, well done for being here and being you and working so hard to raise your own vibration and therefore adding to the collective vibration. Change is happening. Everything is coming together behind the scenes for your highest good and for the highest good of all. Just remember that home is in your heart space. So have faith in you, in the higher power, and pay attention to your life. It's mirroring your inner world. So I hope that you have a, what's the word, beautiful Mercury retrograde. I am here if you want to reach out for anything. And yeah, you are divine, you are sovereign. Your existence is what you make of it. And I want to dedicate this episode to you, as well as all of those who didn't make it to the end of 2022. So cheers and happy new year to all of you. Thank you so much for listening. And I really look forward to seeing you soon. Loads and loads of love from me. I've been Nancy. Take care.